there's such a just a long history of magnetic therapy. You'd go back 4000 BC, the Hindus were using magnetized stones known as lodestones. And mm. the chi- 2000 years uh, later, the Chinese were using magnets and magnetized stones basically to uh, heal people from chronic pain and injury. And then the Egyptians were on to it um, years later. Ancient Greece, uh, Hippocrates uh, used these magnetized stones to alleviate headaches. 1600s, um, Sir William Gilbert used uh, lodestones to relieve the arthritic pains of Queen Elizabeth I. And then even further to that, there's even more of a history as the FDA went on to approve certain amount of uh, PMF therapies for things like healing bones and alleviating That's what's really well known pains. for. Right. So 1932, Yale U- University, uh, they acknowledged PMF um, to able to donate energy to depleted uh, body cells, helping to repair and regenerate. 1979, FDA approved uh, the PMF to combat bone loss. And then yeah. 2008, FDA approves the use of PMEMF therapy for the treatment in Parkinson's disease for the ability of uh, this magnetic field to heal and rebuild nerve tissue. We have been given the scientific knowledge, the technical ability, and the materials to pursue the exploration of the universe. To ignore these great resources would be a corruption of a God-given ability. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stefan, and today I'm joined with Dr. Bill McGraw, who is an expert on pulse electromagnetic field therapy. He started off with using pulse electromagnetic field therapy for himself, and now he has a lot of different clients and has worked with this therapy a lot. So today we're going to talk about PEMF, which is the abbreviation, and go through maybe some of the history, next frontiers, and everything in between. So welcome to the channel, Bill. And very glad to have you here and maybe just get the ball rolling with uh, introduction and where you want to go from there. Okay, great. Thanks so very much for having me. Um, you know, if we talk about how and why people get into these different fields of alternative medicine, normally people have a real passion for things. They always have a story. There's always a backstory of when and where they were kind of chosen or they committed to or they gained a valuable interest in uh, different things in their lives. And so for me, we go back 20 years and I have a PhD in aquaculture and I'm working on this huge project in South Africa, you know, typically working type A hours, 16, 18 hours a day. And I started experiencing this uh, debilitating insomnia uh, in the form of sleeping three or four hours and I'd wake up and couldn't go back to sleep. So naturally I go to the, the old standard MD and he gives me a prescription drug. I mean, what else would they do, right? And it worked sort of for a while. And then after a while, it stopped working. And I was stuck in this uh, cycle of, oh, well, the drug's going to work for a month. And then I went back for another drug. And then it developed into insomnia where I, I by this time, I moved to Panama. And um, at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'd wake up with this uh, anxiety it was like my blood pressure would be 210 over 120 and I feel like I'm oh, dying. Wow. And so it was all really destructive for my career. And I just kept going to doctors and they kept uh, giving me more drugs. And then I went to naturopaths and they hooked me up to machines and gave me foot baths and nothing was working. I kept telling them, look, you know, uh, none of this stuff is working. Do you have anything else? And, and eventually the MD that I was going to see, I mean, every month or whatever, finally looked at me and said, look, I don't have any other drugs or anything else to give you. Don't come back here. And so at this point, I'm walking outside the office thinking, what am I doing with my life? Where am I going with this? Why is this happening? And I just said, I, you know, I'm done with this whole cycle, this madness, because by then it had been years. It had been at least a couple of years. And so I just began reading books and studying to become a naturopathic doctor. And I got into every kind of alternative medicine topic you can imagine. And I determined that I had mineral deficiency of magnesium, potassium, and Mm. the anxiety was a physiological response to deficiencies in these minerals. And, you know, then I got into the work of Dr. Joel Wallach, studied everything he had to teach me. And, you know, his idea was that chronic disease was caused by a mineral deficiency. 
So the next question I had was what causes the mineral deficiency? And that, of course, is heavy metals taking the place of good metals like magnesium and manganese, et cetera. And so once I detox from the heavy metals, you know, most of my problems were over. And when I got mm. done with that, I was still heavy into studying alternative medicine. And the next question I have was, if I went to all these different health professionals, why is it that not a single one could help me over the many years? And it just blew my mind. So I wrote a book on mercury toxicity, 12 hours a day, uh, you know, seven days a week for a whole year until I was finished with that and published it. And then wrote another book on aluminum uh, detox. And now I'm working on another book on copper and so on. And I just became a regular thing from part-time fixing myself and my family to full-time medicine. And that's all I do now. And I got into Rife technology, maybe about 2017. I was really into it. And, mm. you know, just working Rife technology every single day on people and just was so taken by it and what I could do to help people. And from there, I eventually got into PEMF. And the reason for it is that Rife technology is absolutely fantastic at killing stuff in the human body that doesn't belong there, such as bad bacteria, viruses, parasites, cancer cells. It's all easy if you can follow a protocol that's proven itself. And that's the one I developed over years and years of working. And I give that to people in my seminars or in consultations. And the one thing that Rife had a hard time doing, and I expressed this to John White, Who's uh, you know the the main the main guy at uh, Spooky Two with the developing software and and so on, and he said, "Well, I'm working on something. I'm working on this thing. It's going to be out in another year." So, lo and behold, the PEMF mat comes out, and I start using it on myself and other people, and it really does an amazing job in reducing pain and helping people sleep, and also good for detox by opening and closing cell membranes, allowing. Uh, the cell to be energized so that it can receive nutrition and oxygen and then get rid of carbon dioxide. So it's really a detox um, protocol as well. So when I began using that uh, and then helping people uh, not only detox, but helping with their pain and insomnia, you know, after all 80,000 people a year die in the United States from overload of, of pain, pain relievers. And, you know, some of that's recreation and all that, but people yeah, have really a lot of terrible. pain. It's, people have a lot of pain and they're overdoing it. If you look at all these deaths that are mysterious, like even uh, Tom Petty, who I, I was a big fan of, uh, he uh, died of prescription drug. And then you go back and you look at all these other people that died mysteriously. Most of the time it's involved with prescription drugs. So it's just no, no real avenue to be hooked on prescription drugs. They're just horrible in terms of killing people and, and causing all kinds of addiction. So, you know, I was just looking for this way of relieving people's pain and, helping them sleep in the PMF mat, mat was really, you know, the avenue that, that I was looking for. And so it, it really does work in so many different ways. Yeah. What's interesting about the pulse electromagnetic field therapy and like prescription drugs, and everything is a lot of it is just like, what receptor are you binding to activating? What uh, ion channel are you modulating? And the pulse electromagnetic field therapy does that. That's one one of the primary ways that we've identified that it works is by altering those ion channels. So I found it interesting how you said that a lot of your issues were due to mineral deficiencies and the heavy metals. And then when you fix that, um, that you know gave you this like renewal of life force, vitality, energy, and healed a lot of your problems. And that you also discovered the PEMF, and that's also touching those electrolyte balances as well. Right. And uh, that's really powerful because a lot of people know to supplement. Of course, there's a lot of like bogus supplements out there. So you have to be careful with which ones you get, what version right. of magnesium is most effective. People take like magnesium citrate and they have terrible GI problems because yeah. it's a laxative. <laughs> sure. Right? And so it makes things worse in many ways. Now they're not absorbing the minerals and vitamins. But if you don't know, you just think magnesium. But the uh, PEMF, I like uh, in many ways, the the promise of it, and there's clearly like a lot of people have benefited from it. And I've been using it uh, in an interesting way. We'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, I like it because it alters the, the modulation of these channels themselves, some of these receptors themselves, some of the enzymatic activity itself, <laughs> um, which is a little bit different than supplementing with a thing. Um, because a lot of people have a good diet. Some of these people have like really good diets and they're still yeah. having problems. And it's yep. a more fundamental problem than that. And uh, 
<laughs> Were you talking? I think there's multiple mats at uh, Spooky Two and John White. He he's an engineer that makes these things, right? Yeah, he sure does. Yeah, this is the one that uh, that I've been given the Mirror Mate, and this is just the Schumann frequency. So I talk about the Schumann resonances a lot at um, you know seven point eight three hertz is the average. But right. there's other mats, right? There's a whole there's a whole line of mats at different frequencies. Is that correct? Yeah, right, right. So there's that mat that you just um, picked up, which is for chronic uh, disease conditions, uh, more chronic pain, and more acute form. They use a frequency of 9.6 hertz and a different amount of amplitude, so it's more of intensity. And it's a smaller hmm. machine uh, that actually is portable, and there's two rings that you put around the pain, hmm. and you can run it for about 15 minutes, and that helps to get rid of acute pain. So there's a, there's a large mat and then a smaller you know, mini device that you can carry it with you. And in fact, it's around here somewhere. <laughs> okay. I have so many devices around here that I'm working on with people, but yes. you, you can, you can look that up. It's got two small rings. You put it around the area of pain and it runs a 9.6 Hertz and it's more intense and you can get rid of your pain uh, yeah, in about is, 15 minutes. This is the, uh, it's pretty big. They have a new one they just came out with, but this is at 25 and also 80 Gauss. Mm -hmm. I think those are the numbers, and um, right, which is so pretty, there, pretty but, strong. Uh, there's just an uh, intensity it, dial that you can reduce the intensity of the of the device. Yeah, I'm curious and, what the uh, the Gauss reading is. If you know the Gauss value, um, like the range. Yes, probably I, some similar I to do, this. But, um, let me bring that up here, and I okay. can actually tell you what that is so it's six the mat is actually six thousand cows 7.8 hertz as i mentioned two power levels it's five volt adapter uh, no it's just six thousand gauss it's it's up there it's way oh up yeah there. oh yeah and the other one is actually 200 uh but mm. it's a smaller concentrates as a smaller area that six thousand is spread out over the entire mat mm -hmm. which is you know you just basically stick it underneath your mattress pad and mm -hmm. and then you leave it there and turn it out at night and so on it's fairly comfortable and the other one is 9.6 hertz 200 and I actually have a um i have one of these things here there's so many as i mentioned so many devices but basically what you do is you have a a strap um just a simple you know belt type thing and you just strap it around wherever you have your pain, whether it's on your wrist or around the center of your body for your back pain or whatever. And you're putting one ring on one side and one on the other. And what it mm -hmm. does is uh, ameliorates the acute pain in your body. And that really works, not just um, for me and what I've done, but there's a lot of people that are telling me that it's really effective. So um, yeah, those are the I two wanna... type devices. Go ahead. Yeah, one of the things I want to mention to everyone that's watching this is to uh, back up just a little bit and to to give a little bit of context, like the Earth's magnetic field, the one that we evolved in, there's multiple uh, fields, electromagnetic fields that exist. The Earth's magnetic field has a strength of about 25 to 65 uh, Gauss, so 25,000 to 65,000 nanotesla. So these fields are stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. Um, and they're localized. So the Earth's field is always there. It doesn't matter where you go, it's always going to be there. And there's cellular interactions with that static field. And the reason these uh, pulse electromagnetic field therapy techniques can have beneficial effects on the body, and you also have to be very mindful and careful with these. Uh, luckily, there's a lot of good information out there on how to use them. Uh, they're able to affect change in some part because they have these fields that are stronger than the Earth's. So Maybe uh, could you share with us like the difference between a static and a pulse field and why? Because there's a lot of good research on static fields and how that can be really useful. Like yesterday, I just did some biomagnetic therapy where they use yeah. like 1000 Gauss magnets and put them yeah. on the body. Yeah. That was really cool. Really like I, I'll be releasing an interview, maybe it's already out, some content on that, yeah. education on that. Um, but that's a static field and the pulse fields are you know different dc ac so if you could talk about that a little bit yeah please. um there's such a just a long history of magnetic therapy you'd go back 4000 bc the hindus were using magnetized stones known as lodestones and mm. the 2000 years uh later the chinese were using magnets and magnetized stones basically to uh heal people from chronic pain and injury and then the egyptians were onto it 
um, years later, ancient Greece, uh, Hippocrates uh, used these magnetized stones to alleviate headaches. 1600s, um, Sir William Gilbert used uh, lodestones to relieve the arthritic pains of Queen Elizabeth the first and then even further to that there's even more of a history as the fda went on to approve certain amount of uh, pmf therapies for things like healing bones and alleviating that's what's really well known for right so 1932 yale U university uh they acknowledged pmf um, to able to donate energy to depleted uh, body cells, helping to repair and regenerate. 1979, FDA approved uh, the PMF to combat bone loss. And then yeah. 2008, FDA approves the use of PMEMF therapy for the treatment in Parkinson's disease for the ability of uh, this magnetic field to heal and rebuild nerve tissue which hmm. is huge now as two out of three people over the age of 80 is going to die from Alzheimer's in the next 20 years. So yeah, yep. neurodegenerative problems are serious and it's, it seems to be uh, an increasing problem with the increasing electro smog of our environment. Oh yeah. It's, uh, and that, that's the interesting thing. And that's one of the reservations people might have is like, Oh, well there's so much electromagnetic uh, field energy now as compared to before. Why would adding more help? But I think it's really the the precision application of these fields, certain parts, certain time windows, and the fact that it's this uh you know pulse feed at a specific frequency. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really uh, important to to be educated on to understand, so you can use these therapies to their maximum benefit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, putting electrical charge through a a copper wire creates a toroidal field. Uh, and it, it put a pulse toward a field. And so this um, has more of an exemplary effect in terms of in, being able to heal uh, the body, being able to charge cells, you know, create a cell membrane potential plus outside minus inside, which allows the flow of not only energy, but oxygen, nutrients, minerals, carbon dioxide, water, toxins out of the cell and so on. So one of the ideas of chronic disease and aging is as we age, there's a loss of functionality of cells and cell turnover decreases. So cells are older and they don't function as well. So there's an idea that the PEMF technology is actually good as an anti-aging protocol and the fact that you're charging cells to work more functional, they're more functional, they work better and there's a better turnover of of cell uh, division and new cells more new cells are produced over time and also you know all these other things like increase in endorphins we heal faster we sleep better uh, when we can put a pmf um, field uh, next to the body in in some form or another whether it be a mat or whether it be some of these uh, rings that you put directly on pain and so the field extends for typically six inches um and it's just a great alternative to having to deal with um you know pain and and all these detox issues that are people are into and i think i did a seminar in in um insomnia and it's one of the biggest problems people have today and like you say oh, yeah from the for everything from 5g to wi-fi to everybody has a cell phone and nobody leaves it outside the bedroom <laughs> but most, most people I have do, it. but i'm one of the few yeah that's right so most people have just have it on the desk and reach for the cell phone in the middle of the night to check the time check your alarm check your emails you know and so on and i'm, oh, I'm guilty of that because <laughs> a lot of times i I'll, I'll put it somewhere and forget and i'll say oh you know i think i have this this and this to do and i can't remember but you know all those fields it, back in the day it used to be just radio and tv now You've got all these different uh, energies in the atmosphere, the Wi-Fi and all this stuff. And I think it's really screwing people up. And the more heavy metals you have, the more an effect these different yeah, fields have on the body. Right, right. So it's complicated, you know. Um, and I think it's it's going to become more and more important as, as we go on in terms of increasing technologies. And you can have the Internet of Things and smart meters. And I found that. The more, the more heavy metals, the more problems people are having. And right now, heavy metals in the environment and, and uh, in the water and, and our food are higher than ever. So it's just something that we're just not going to be able to get away from. And we're going to have to constantly, constantly deal with that.
Yeah, my my friend went with me to this biomagnetism uh, therapy, and they use muscle testing to identify things. So that's that's a conversation uh, in and of itself. Without sure. going to that, uh, we identified. We also did a heavy metal detox screen, like to see what pairs that need to be placed. And uh, she was given arsenic, and she used to live in Texas and just recently moved. Is dealing with chronic fatigue. Yep. And she was like, yeah, we knew there was arsenic in the water. Just that we had no way, we had like no money for the reverse osmosis filter because those things mm-hmm. are like bloody expensive. Right. And if you need the remineralizer, then it's also like, mm-hmm. is that remineralizer good? Like, do they have the right ratios? There's like such a lack of uh, depth of understanding on this. Whereas before you could, you know, hopefully just go out to the spring and nature would give you that right ratio everything you need and if you grew up there then your body you know found its homeostasis and a lot of this is just you know we're being shifted away from homeostasis the body's trying to bring it back to center and then as a result it's creating these um health symptoms which may actually in and of itself be what you need to do like with chronic fatigue it's probably like you need to do nothing to like be able to handle that stress load ideally you have energy but if you don't have the capability if you were to run a marathon on top of this huge stress load, that might be the over final overload. So it's saying, sure. no, you have to do nothing. Um, but then it's really tough because now you're doing nothing from, let's say, chronic fatigue. You're really just resting, but you're resting inside your house, which has the 60 hertz power grid in North America. And then, yeah, maybe you have a Wi-Fi router, two extenders. You're in an apartment building. So there's like, <laughs> you know, 40 Wi-Fi routers near you. And then, yeah, your yeah. phone, that's. People don't realize that uh, I think it's important to uh, make people aware that receiving the electromagnetic radiation to a device, it doesn't have to be like the strongest power, but for the cell phone or the laptop, like the cell phone in particular to reach the tower has to put out a very strong field. And of course that then, you know, via the inverse square law drops, you know, pretty rapidly, but it needs to still be able to, you know, catch that waveform and find the information signal on top. And then relay that through the full system. Um, so it's going to be very powerful signal at your phone. And then it'll be less powerful, but still powerful enough to get picked up maybe two kilometers away at the mm-hmm. tower. And the issue with something like 5G and eventually there'll be 6G, 7G is that to increase the information density, mm-hmm. they're making the waveform shorter. The wavelength mm-hmm. is reducing. So now it's getting closer and closer to the ionization potential. And we know that electromagnetic fields have non-thermal, non-ionization bioelectric health effects. Mm. You know, like, you know, those voltage uh, gated channel interactions and even like DNA and enzyme reactions and cell membrane, like you talked about a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's this tricky situation. Have you have you heard of earthing? Have you tried earthing? Do you practice earthing? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, back in the day when I first started treating clients here in Panama, they would always say, well, you know, I feel so much better when I go down to the beach and, you know, we're able to walk in the sand and the water. And of course that's earthing, receiving electrons from the earth. And it was beneficial for relaxation, but also for uh, reduced stress and pain. So, you know, I, I understood that. And then, you know, I got into reading books and then we have earthing mats where we connect to the ground all the time. But here in Panama, it's funny because we have so many parasites that you could pick up from the mm. ground, hookworm and so on. So uh, it's kind of more dangerous to um, to actually walk around on the, the, just the bare ground in your bare feet because you will pick up a parasite. Uh, we don't have uh, much in terms of domestic water treatment and wastewater treatment. It, we really haven't gotten into it really in this province because we're out near the Costa Rican border. We're just not anywhere near Panama City. So, you know, the infrastructure here is just not quite up to specs. A lot of the indigenous people who live in the mountains uh, don't have uh, wastewater treatment. So it's kind of dicey where you get your water from and how you pick up parasites. And so I know this is whole idea of, you know, well, be careful. You don't walk outside uh, and, and bare feet because you'll pick up parasites from the ground. And because we live in the subtropics where it's always warm and so on, they're constantly there. So it's something to be aware of. So I mm. always tell people, you know, go down to the beach and do that or yeah, yeah. Uh, at least walk in the streams and so on so you don't pick up too many parasites. But in the soils, they're pretty active in terms of, of transfer of parasites. So I guess there's that to think about. One other thing that you mentioned, which is really interesting, is the ions and the ratio 
the ions mm -hmm. in our blood are are nearly exact the exact same proportion of what's in the ocean. So ocean salt water has about the same ratio of magnesium, potassium, and calcium uh, that what we have in our our blood. So I make I make a salt mix which has got you know ratio of four magnesium to one calcium to two potassium, which mm -hmm. is uh, the potassium slightly higher, which tends to have a relaxing you know, calming effect on the human body that's overloaded from stress and in chronic, uh, chronic fight or flight reaction. So salt yeah. mixes like that, you know, extra magnesium in the human body, it's in the form of magnesium chloride, of course. And so when you put in those ions in about that proportion, it's good for people who are constantly sweating. Like what, what we do here is constantly sweat outside. Uh, and then it's also good for people who have stress overload is to get ions in the same proportion of what's normally in the blood. And it helps to, to balance ions and helps them sleep and helps them reduce stress and fatigue over time. Yeah. Electrolytes. And those are uh, a critical component. If you want the PEMF therapy to uh, really be effective. I mean, certainly it'll have some effect just through the mechanisms of electromagnetic, like electromagnetism and how it interacts with the body. But there's ways to uh, optimize these effects. And sometimes those optimizations can really make a big difference. And I think that's also an important component of this uh, education process and and giving people kind of the, you know, if you want the full depth, you kind of have to figure it all out yourself at, at this stage, at least. But to give people really good starting points, like, okay, you can do the PEMF therapy. You can buy this device. Or if you don't have the money, you can do earthing, go to the ocean, swim. That's uh, different than PEMF, but related. But then also be mindful of your electrolyte intake and your your mineral balance and your overall, uh, you know, your overall diet and lifestyle. And like you were talking about having the phone near the bed table, uh, the dresser drawer or something, and uh, picking it up and checking something at 2 a.m. <laughs> and uh and the the thing with that, it's not just the fact that it has this magnetic field. It's also that, you know, now there's a lot of blue light beaming out. And now you're creating this neural pathway to kind of expect to get a blue light shot, like a shot of blue light, you know, energizing <laughs> um, brainwave activity at 2 a.m. So when you start to go and develop these over time, it's kind of sinister in some ways that now you find yourself waking up at 2 a.m. because you've done that in the past. And some of these things require a really big pattern break. And uh, like one way for someone to do that would literally be like, I'm just going to go camping for two weeks. And then it all gets reset because that groove is no longer being, water is no longer running through it. Electrical activity is not stimulating it. The circadian rhythm is not uh, established for two weeks to pick up the phone at two. Mm -hmm. um, but the PEMF is nice because it can help to rewire some of those connections because it is an agent of change. Mm -hmm. um, and... My experience with the mat here is, you know, I'm in, I'm in pretty good health. So I don't really have any like uh, chronic health issues and stuff. I have my things that I'm very mindful and working on. Um, mm -hmm. But I really liked it because it's at that Schumann frequency. And to get like a Schumann resonance generator, there's a lot of uh, research that was done in like the early 60s and the 70s and 80s. And a lot of German manufacturers made these little like Schumann generators that you can't find anymore. At least I, I haven't been able to find them. Uh -huh. uh, they're, they're pretty like rare and they were like a little pocket harmonizer. So they called them. Um, but I like this a lot. Even if I don't necessarily lay it under my bed uh, or I like using it while I stretch a little bit to help open up the, the ion channels and let the fascia kind of remodel. Uh -huh. I like it just as a Schumann generator in the house. It has the two power settings. You can turn it on and you can turn it off. Uh -huh. um, you can go from 25 to 80. I believe those are the numbers in Gauss. And just as a uh, as a cost effective Schumann generator that will get the whole house blanketed, that's really cool. And then you can also use it for these other things. So um, I like how there's multiple ways to use PEMF. You can use the the little ring ones that you have, like mm -hmm. directly on the body. But this can yep. even mm -hmm. just be s simply put in the corner of your house somewhere and flipped on, and then see how that makes you feel. Um, because I know a lot of people will use like binaural beats to entrain Schumann waves, but the the science of binaural beats is there, but it's not so so effective. I think it's overhyped in its effectiveness because um, it's easy. You can click a YouTube video or whatever, and you know 
to, to get binaural beats. But this is right. actually what you're trying to do. You're actually trying to stimulate that Schumann field, and, right? You know, and that's a that's really cool that you could uh, use that in other ways like that. And that's how I've been primarily using it, and that's been really nice. I've noticed um, like kind of an enhancement in creativity and focus, yeah. and some of these more like theta rhythm uh, type effects um, from using just as a generator like that. Well. Yeah, interesting stuff. Um, what do you think about negative ion generators? I've been getting more into them as a way of cleaning the air, charging, mm. relaxing. Do you have any experience with that? No, I, but I started to research into them uh, because our ducts in this house are like loaded with mold and they need to get totally wiped. Yeah. And, uh, you know, negative ion generator, it, you know, is putting out these negative ions that have this negative charge and it'll react then uh, with, you know, let's say like a mold spore or bacteria. You can use it for that reason. Um, but because they're ions, they have a very high charge so they can break that molecular bond and then kill that spore. But the issue with that for us is that a issue and benefit, right? You know, two edges of the sword is that it can also do that potentially with healthy cells. So if you're like antioxidant deficient, then it's potentially going to be pretty, pretty tough on you because you're just like, you know, reacting with all the cells, you're reacting with some of the cancer cells. You know, we all have cancer cells to some degree. Mm -hmm. just, the immune system gobbles up. Some people it goes, you know, obviously it goes bad. Uh, and then there's the old cells that you're talking about that should have, mm -hmm undergone apoptosis a while ago but with i have some reservations with the ion generators because now you're breathing in effectively ozone all the time and ozone can be toxic uh you don't want too much it's like it can be therapeutic but then it can also be toxic i feel like it's therapeutic in an acute sense like sometimes like you go to the mountains and there's like a generation of ozone due to a thunderstorm and it helps to you know it preferentially will bind to those older cells or dead cells or dying cells or whatever because the the body funnels it there through antioxidants mm -hmm. but then if you're constantly getting it in then that could like in the long run be very bad for you like ozone is a toxic uh you know o3 in particular mm -hmm. um so i think there has to be some uh some nuance in that application but i think that could be very powerful because it is one of those methods that can go down at the molecular level at that cellular level and enact change and if all the other factors are in place too like if you have the healthy diet the right electrolyte balance all this stuff then um then it should allow for a fairly fast remodeling of the body especially if you're like fasting you're in that protective state of autophagy and the, all the healthy cells are gonna be like nope you're not going to react with us then um those ions will eventually react with you know pathogens you know, like, uh, let's say like yeast or candida viruses, uh, you know, the cells that need to go be recycled. So I think it can be very powerful for that, but I haven't used it personally. Uh, I just understand the science of like ions and charged particles fairly well. And I can kind of bridge the, my two schools of understanding with biology and, um, uh, some of these uh, electromagnetic dynamics together, but in terms of direct experience with a, a negative charge ion generator, uh, I don't have one yet though so, you know i think we all have naturally just through our environment at times but you you have one yourself you use one yeah or? i do i i've got a new newer model which is supposedly produces uh, very low amounts of ozone as it's producing uh the ions so uh, i have a number of clients that suffer from tinnitus and mm. one of the things that i've had really positive um, experience with is just cleaning the air up uh, because sometimes I think they have inner ear infections. And so by taking some of the trash out of the, the atmosphere, maybe reducing mold spores, like you mentioned, uh, their tinnitus sometimes clears up when they can get rid of some of these inner ear infections. So that's one of the things I was thinking of. They get into uh, the super air filters, you know, the HEPA and all that, and it's helped people um, clear up their tinnitus and some of these chronic ear infections that they have. So I was heading down that road eventually looking at different ways of of cleaning up the environment. Um, we don't have much in the way here of knowledge of, of, of clean air and whatever. We don't have a lot of industry on the other hand as well, but you know, just the infrastructure is just not what it is in the United States. So it's something to be continually mindful is how can we bridge the gap between, you know, uh, lack of engineering and, and development 
of infrastructure at different levels. So for instance, wastewater treatment, so on, they're just getting into that now and, and finding different technologies that people can use on their own rather than relying on uh, maybe the local government to catch up with certain ways and, mm-hmm. and doing certain things to help people out and in and, and that avenue. So yeah, I think um, that thing is really the future in many ways is uh, you like to, you would like to rely on some central authority that, you know, is, is grounded and has the right info or at least is, you know, doing a pretty good job. But I think it's really, I think we're in an era of like personal uh, self-responsibility. I mean, we always have been, but especially now, if you really want to be healthy, if you really want to live a fruitful life uh, and you're going to have to shape your environment yourself uh, to whatever specs you want. But I'm glad you mentioned the tinnitus because I have a lot of people that comment on my channel talking about tinnitus specifically around uh, like space weather events and geomagnetic storms and increases in the Schumann resonances in terms of their power. Um, and I haven't really had an answer for them too much yet, but the inner ear infection, that that makes sense in regards to that being the factor of tinnitus. And that could kind of be like one of these hidden things that you don't really know you have mm-hmm. uh, because it's, you know, it could be pretty deep in there, mm-hmm. uh, but your only symptom is just this ringing. Um, do you find the PEMF helps with tinnitus? You know, I haven't gotten into that yet. Um, I we do I do have a PMF mat here, and I do use it in myself. And I have a couple other clients that use it. But I think there's this gap between when uh, you know a new product or a new technology comes out, uh, like the Spooky Two. I'm, all my clients, I do Rife Technology and Spooky Two on them. When that thing comes out, and when actually it enters. Um, the setting where people are using it more regularly. A lot of people are using it. In other words, there's a gap between when the thing comes out and when a lot of people are going to use it enough so that the mm-hmm. word word gets around, it reaches a certain saturation and people are saying, oh yeah, I use this or oh yeah, I use that. And then it really becomes more of a regular thing rather than, hey, that's a new product. Has anybody tried that? Uh, so I don't know that I have tried the PMF um, on that in terms of, of improving tinnitus. But pre- years ago, I, it was always clean in the air was what the first thing I try to do. Cause we live in such a, uh, well, I, I live in such a wet, damp, uh, environment mm-hmm. all the time. It just rains every single day here for like eight months, almost every day. And so, you know, people have to constantly deal with mold in the house. And so it's something to continually deal with. Uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to ask you, you're really the ideal person to ask this because you're so heavy into it, is, um, you know, people talk a lot about 5G and, mm. you know, whether or not we have it, we don't have it. You know, is there more transmitters outside the house and it's a smaller wavelength and there's more energy to push that smaller, shorter wavelength? The question I always get is, well, how can we block it off? And if you can only get a cell phone that has 5G and nothing else, you're going to have to use it if you're going to communicate with the rest of the world. And, uh, you know, mm-hmm. the question I have is, well, if it's so bad, is there any way we can block it out? And I've heard things like, well, sheets of mylar and maybe, you know, sleeping in a Faraday cage. <laughs> and it all gets yeah. kind of tinfoil hat out there, you know? I mean, somebody comes into your house and says, you know, what? what is that? It looks kind of suspicious with a cage and straps around your bed. So, um, <laughs> right. What it, well, no, no, hang on a minute. That's just a Faraday cage. Oh, yeah, sure, buddy. But, you know, without going overboard, is there any re- real way to deal with, uh, you know, the effects of 5G? We're always I hear these stories about, well, it was militarized back in the day and 5G uh, technology is if we're going to use it in our cell phones, you know, it used to be used in weapons and all this. And so I was wondering what, what your idea was on that. Yeah, there's a few different, uh, I think, first, uh, developing a little bit of understanding of like how those fields work is important. Then also there's a few different levels of what you can do. So the first thing that is important to understand is that 5G and 4G and all these others, they're all in this like a uh, gigahertz band. Mm-hmm. Uh 4G and some of these other are high megahertz, and then 5G is just uh, starting to hit into the gigahertz band. So they're cycling mm-hmm. uh, billions of times per second. So mm-hmm. it's a, you know that millimeter wave. So it's a short wavelength, and that influences what it resonates with too. So there is a lot that we don't know about how it directly resonates with cells, cell groups. You know, let's say maybe organs, things of this nature. Whereas radio waves are like really resonating with your entire body to some degree, but then they also can drill down even interacting with like dna because it's fractal nature and stuff so that's mm-hmm. that's another thing too is the fact that dna has been shown to uh 
since it has self-similar design across all of its scales that it can connect to and resonate with uh, electromagnetic waves all the way from the ELF range, like near zero hertz, all, all the way up to 5G and then beyond to ionizing radiation, which would be mm. like ultraviolet and such. So the, the 5G in the environment will be changing the movement of electrons through uh just to use one thing it can it can influence the movement of electrons through dna changing where they gather group up where that potential stored in dna therefore changing its shape and morphology and therefore uh changing what parts get activated uh epigenetically mrna goes to the sections that have the charge buildup that's what it seems to be that's the best research out there that i found and then from there you transcribe the proteins and all this stuff. So it'll it'll all these electromagnetic fields interact with your DNA uh, as far as we've seen and can change your epigenetic expression. The thing with 5G is it's not really necessarily a new problem. 4G was a shorter wavelength, but it's not like a huge difference. It's it's just uh, yeah, it's a difference, but it's not like uh, the first time we flipped it on. Right. The first time we flipped on the cellular networks, that in and of itself was kind of the first introduction of this. This is just an evo- like a, a like a kind of a small evolution. Mm-hmm. And as it comes out of the, the towers, there's more towers because the wave attenuates faster because it's pulsing more often, has more opportunities to react, like to interact these photons with some particle or something, let's say an electron. So mm-hmm. You're gonna. It's gonna have a higher reactivity. You could call it reactivity because of its faster uh, frequency and shorter wavelength. Mm-hmm. And so, like a radio wave doesn't interact that often because of that. So that's why they need more transmitters because the air is absorbing a lot of them. But also, they'll be absorbed into the walls of the building and then things of that nature. And then the biosphere, you, us, like we absorb them. And the common thing will be, like, oh, well, it's just absorbed and turned into thermal radiation. But as there's plenty of research to show, these electromagnetic fields from the radio spectrum to the microwave spectrum, they have non-thermal bioelectric effects by interacting with like enzymes, like the charge carriers within enzymes, uh, DNA, as we just talked about, the, the ion channels, et cetera. So that is going to change electromagnetic potentials in the body at a variety of scales, going all the way down to like the atomic and then up. Um, <laughs> But I think the bigger problem with 5G, to get more into the meat of what you're talking about, is now that we understand attenuation, is the fact that your phone, again, is going to be the biggest 5G emitter if you have a 5G phone. Like, I still have an iPhone 10 because it doesn't have 5G, and it works, okay. for, like, it works for me. But okay. a lot of phones, you can turn it off. I know I think, at least on the iPhone, you can turn off 5G. Uh, maybe they've removed that now. So the first step is I would turn it off because you 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 definitely 4G would be safer than 5G, it seems, based, based on attenuation physics. Mm-hmm. So you turn that off. Um, and then I always put my phone on airplane mode if it's on my body. Uh, and let, I mean, it's all about like exposure. So sometimes it'll be on, but very rarely. And I don't put it near anything that's sensitive. You never want to put your phone here. And if you're a guy, don't put your phone near you know your good stuff because that's <laughs> yeah that's not gonna be good and you don't want to use your phone i don't have my phone with me right now but let's say this is my phone right you don't want to like ever talk on the phone like this for extended periods of time if it's like one minute okay like that's not gonna it's not the end of the world don't th- stressing about that's a bigger factor but <laughs> when you're on the phone for two hours and you're sh- like shooting the shit with someone or whatever well, and you do it all the time, and some mm-hmm. people do. They're on the phone all the time. That's terrible. So the wired headsets are the best um, because they aren't, like, using Bluetooth. I think the wireless ones are fine for the, just, like, a little bit, like, not that often. But mm-hmm. ideally, you can just hold it with speaker like this. Yeah. And you can even put it down in front of you, mm-hmm. right, and then kind of distance yourself and then speak that way. Um, but the airplane mode is really powerful. And in regards to like the home environment, um, the nice thing about these uh, waves is since they have a higher frequency, they will interact and absorb into things like copper fabric. Uh, whereas a the power grid noise won't really absorb into that because the frequency is low enough that it can pass through these uh, metallic sheets. Even then, you would need a longer, thicker, you know, more energy dense like lead. Uh, to really shield some of those uh, waves. It helps, but 
but the copper fabric for sure will block uh, a cell phone wave. 5G doesn't matter. That actually makes it more effective as the frequency goes up. And you can you can simply put your phone on, not on airplane mode, on and put in some copper fabric and you will not be able to call it. It will wow. not react. Nothing of this nature will happen. So I mean, wow. the microwave is also like, don't go in the kitchen, turn the microwave on for 10 minutes. And then I don't even use a microwave, right? But don't put it on for 10 minutes and stand there the whole time. They put this screen on the front to hopefully block the radiation, but you can use a, a, a radiation counter. I have one uh, right here. You can still measure it off the microwave, like uh -huh. the power density of the field. Uh -huh. But if you if you use a microwave, you can get copper fabric and just put it over the front. So you just you know pull it back, open the door, put your thing in, go like this, and then draw it back over. That'll sure. block it. Wow. In terms of the the home environment. Um, if you wanted to really block it, then you could get a copper fabric sheet and then just sew that into like a normal cotton sheet. And that could be like your top sheet that you put over you. And you could even put one wow. underneath you on the bed and you would never know. That's But that's better than a Faraday cage. Um, Faraday cages are, that's like for a big electromagnetic pulse, right? Like an EMP device, it'll be able to route that energy because it has a thick metal. Um but for something like a cell phone signal, if you're really like if you're really in a bad state with your health, then you should take that step, I think, of of using the copper fabric laying at the base of your bed to stop things from coming up. And then also you could have that as your top sheet. You use the cotton, sew it in with the cotton. They don't really make these yet. I'm hoping to, you know, maybe start to make these I'm like prototyping right now. And then you sew the cotton there because the copper will react with oils on the skin. Um, so it gets kind of gross over time, but if you use the, the cotton on top, it's still conductive. That's kind of like an earthing setup too. So you can both a block this radiation and then also connect it to a, a ground stake outside and earth. And, uh, that's also good for the body in terms of, uh, improving antioxidant activity and decharging free radicals and stuff. Uh, uh how so about, um, how about, uh, grounding the roof? Um, I had one client was talking to me about running a uh, copper wire from the roof into the ground and grounding. Well, we have metal roofs here, so mm -hmm. they're made out of zinc and a zinc composite. So, uh, what do you think about that? Is that just too tin foil hat or is that, does that have potential reducing some of the, some of the radiation, radiation we're exposed to, or is that yeah, just that's not, that's not tin foil hat at all. That makes perfect sense for a few reasons. Cause if you have a lightning strike, right. You would certainly want some route for that to go. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's raining all the time there, I'm sure you get some epic thunderstorms. You know, yep. you're one of those lightning chimneys. So mm -hmm. uh, what is it? I think it's every every day at uh, 8, 800 UTC, you, you get a lot of lightning activity in the general region. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, that, that'd be a smart thing to do, uh, to, to, to build that electromagnetic conduction uh, otherwise you're creating this like higher potential zone here. And then if you can facilitate that and it's not, you know, broken up by this resistive body of air and wood in between or concrete, mm -hmm. you can connect that directly. We have a copper line, ideally one on each side, then yeah, that would help, uh, just for a safety perspective, like lightning strikes, but then also, yeah, any, any, uh, electromagnetic radiation, from the environment like artificial will hit that roof and get absorbed into that and then it'll you know flow into the earth and decharge pretty nicely that would be useful certainly mm. you do have some ability to absorb these things through your skin so you're getting some epsom salts into your some magnesium into your body through uh something like that with apple cider vinegar it's just on the uh you know it's an acid uh but now you have like you know the the microbiome mother so that eventually influences their microbiome state. And the thing with uh, like pulling these things out and particles and everything is that um, a lot of times like, you know, these watercolor changes is due to just like chemical reactions happening with like the stuff that's in there. So <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's like, oh, look at all the stuff I pulled out. It's like, is the chemical reaction? Oh, yeah, hurt? yeah. Um, um, I, I think you totally opened up the proverbial can of worms there because looking at the research over time, uh, with foot baths where you're putting a DC current, I think, through the water and it's supposed to draw out all these toxins. Looking at the research is that the foot bath is the same color with or without the feet and it's actually rust. It's oxidation of the metals and 
and all that. On the other hand, I do see some clients talking about these various colors, these green colors and all that. And I'm not quite sure what to make of it, but the research in as far as the scientific journals state that it activates a detox system or detox mechanisms within the body. In other words, you'll dump more toxins through the urine and it will relieve some pain. So maybe that's what you're talking about is more along the lines of maybe having an earthic, earthing effect or a biomagnetic effect on the human body. Cause people are always talking, well, when I do that, I have less pain. Okay. Maybe there's that, but the research always said that there wasn't much in terms of toxins being removed through the feet, but I have certain clients that swear, Oh, I got all these different colors. Come on. What else? It's not all rust. Uh, so I, you know, I kind of still up in the air as to what to make of the whole foot bath thing and removing toxins through the feet. And the new idea, of course, is removing these nanoparticles. Um, yeah. You know, one, one other thought here is that with the Spooky 2 Central, there's a an output on that amplifier from when you're making the plasma device for the transfer of right frequencies. That's just a, uh, there's a pulse electromagnetic field device you know, there's bunches of them around here that you place on the body, which transmit 100 hertz to open and close cell membranes to allow the transfer of the rife uh, frequency through the body faster and more efficiently. So that's that's primarily how I got into the PMF. And then, of course, smaller applications, let's say you've got that small PMF coil you're putting directly on, let's say, uh, a wound or a fractured bone, and there would be remarkably uh, a- a- increase in, in uh, healing so decrease in healing time is one of the things I've seen with PMF devices. Do you have any experience with that as far as the healing effects and of PMF and all that? Not for me personally. Um, I, I'm much more on the earthing side and I haven't necessarily needed to deal with this. But to kind of address all the things uh, that you brought up, there's first there's a little bit of this uh, concept of like having it, finding some easy path out of something. Uh, and there's like, there's like, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's karma that builds up and some of it's in like, you know, self and self-imposed other times it's like, you know, environmental karma. You're in Texas, you're drinking the water, there's arsenic. You, you ideally can move, but perhaps, you know, I'm not going to get into, you know, judging everybody for their limitations in life. So there's, mm-hmm. th- there's things karma like that, that you then might have to deal with. And then there's karma, like you ate a lot of cheesecake every single night and you built up. So vast stores of body fat. And during this, then you had more room for these toxins to be shuttled in there, for example, because the body, it's like I can process this now, but it might be overload on your your detox systems and too stressful. So we will put it into things like body fat. And then as a result, when there's a more uh, beneficial time, we can start to detox. But as they build, if it continues to build, then it has these long-term slow detoxing effects. So People are in many ways looking to like, you know, re- obviously, yes, we want to remediate these problems, but there is going to you try to make it as easy as possible, but there's still going to be some effect that you're going to have to deal with this, you know, this, uh, this reaction uh, of now releasing these things. So you just want to put the body in the most protective state possible in regards to the foot baths. I mean, my thought is like where there's smoke, there's fire right so there's something there there's some there's some truth to that i think yeah, the yeah. earthing effect certainly uh i think maybe there's a few different things to help explain this uh and you are doing some ionic balancing by using either an acid or the epsom salts whatever i don't like the idea necessarily of running a dc like current in there i think it'd be better to just do this outside with the earth's natural dc current because mm-hmm. um, i think a lot of these fields that we're getting already are too much and the pemf should really be um, you know, very like the application should be very specific or you should have it like, you know, you have like a serious problem and therefore it's uh, application is like for like, you know, big time thing. Um, mm-hmm. And not to, not to like, just go crazy. Like you don't want to buy, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want someone to buy like five devices and run them simultaneously. Right. Then it's like, you know, very, very precise applications. I think that are the biggest effect. So um that's that's with some of these uh like protocols and things i think it behooves to learn also about things like fasting so okay you're going to do some heavy metal detox or this like nanoparticle detox or uh you know 
you have uh, things that your body's producing that's not supposed to, and you want to be able to detox that. And actually, let's say, why is your body producing those? You uptook some DNA into your cells that was patented, right? That's the problem now. It's literally a pat- <laughs> the problem now is that you took up patented DNA through CRISPR technology applied. And yeah. now some portion of your cells are producing these toxins endogenously. And as they undergo mitosis and produce more cells, then you have to deal with ever increasing loads of this because they were instructed to do that. So if you want to remove these things, you need to attack things from all fronts simultaneously. And, and like, so do this while fasting and then, yeah, find, find methods that help to pull toxins out of the body. And then while you're doing that support things that, you know, uh, are involved in that detoxification process. So support the kidneys with certain herbs, support the liver with certain herbs, you know, make sure the bladder is healthy because it's going to be holding on and being exposed to these toxins in many ways, right? Your oh, yeah. digestive system will oh, be a yeah. big detox pathway. Um, the immune system is going to be activated and triggered. So make sure you're not doing anything to trigger the immune system, uh, which is a lot of things out there. Uh, things like uh, just a food, for example, would be dairy, right? You can, I like dairy. I'm not saying don't have it, but it can trigger the immune system. A lot of foods can, a lot mm-hmm. of some herbs can. Um, certain people can, right? Who, who are you with all the time? The air that you're breathing, is it fresh? Um, and so it's like this multifaceted approach. Uh, but yeah, there's, it's appealing to just have this bath, this foot bath that you can put in. And then it's like within five minutes, you know, 10 years of bad decisions is like just flushed out of your body. I don't think that's possible. Um, right. but I, I do think that if you combine some of these different modalities, and you do them consciously, you can actually make the healing process much easier than the buildup. Like yeah. it's not a one-to-one, 10 years of problems, 10 years of healing. I think it could be 10 years in a one year. Yeah. Um, I think that's very possible, but it just, you know, having that right footing, that's primarily at the end of the day through do it yourself research, but then also you hope that there's people that have really condensed and collected this information with integrity and put it out there for you. Um, to give you a really good head start because like not everyone not everyone has the brain to read a research paper uh, and that's not a bad thing but then not everyone has that or the time to read like hundreds of them and then summarize condense and find the truth in between because a lot of these scientists they aren't reading across disciplines so they don't know they're just in their one very specific narrow field so that's something i do is i read across all these fields and hopefully i'm I'm doing my best to condense, summarize, find that kind of simplified truth. And then here you go. And then also research more. Um, Right. But I, I I hope I addressed your question there. I feel like there's, there might be a little bit more that I am missing if you wanted to. uh, Uh, No, I think you, I think you brought up another important part of the conversation is that is a transfer of information, maybe from a science level into more layman's terms and how people can apply these things. There's a gap there in between the engineers, even at Spooky 2 and what they're developing and what I'm doing on a day-to-day basis, applying this technology to people. And uh, not everything that they offer is going to be a benefit to every person. So it's kind of like, it's going to take people like us to look at that technology that comes out of the engineers and the science and apply it on a daily basis to people where you're, you know, you're using this treatment or you're using earthing or whatever. Uh, what is the effect on that? You know, uh, a practical effect on people and how is it helping them? And I totally agree with the old, uh, the old, the old idea that people just want to go on a detox weekend and then they're going to, you know, shoot everything that they've, they've acquired over 10 years. And, and uh, there's this idea, well, I'm just going to detox weekend and then, you know, Let's go out, as you would say, for the cheesecake and whatever's. But um, <laughs> yeah, there's this side. I have clients that are totally like that. Rather than changing a lifestyle and understanding just the basics of what's going on and and how simple things can affect them, a lot of times people can be their own worst enemy and they get into these situations where they're just going to, well, I'm just going to do this or the next new thing without so much understanding the basic science of it and how it's applied to people and the effect on them. Uh, in layman's terms, being able to put that and say, look, you know, this is what's happened to you. This is what you need to do. And a lot of times, almost all the time, it has to be a lifestyle change rather than 
well, I'm fine. I'm just going to do a sweat therapy for a week or whatever, and then I'm out. But you know what? As you get into this, as you know, it becomes more along the lines of months to years. And then, well, it's a change in lifestyle, really, yeah, rather than... <laughs> Rather than just saying that, oh no, I'm just going to detox. I'm on a detox weekend, and then that'll clean her up, and and then I'm back to doing whatever, whatever, you know. Yeah, constant evolution. You're finding new, deeper layers that uh, you know require, uh, let's say, optimization or healing. I mean, there's the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual body. So you might start with the physical, then all of a sudden, be like, whoa, like there's all these emotional things connected. Like I. I can't touch my toes. And if, if I stretch for five minutes, I like start feeling things I haven't felt before because you're activating the somatic system. And uh, to, to circle back to something you said earlier with uh, in your, in your practice, giving uh, people rife technology and then they uh, get sleepy and they kind of go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And I did the biomagnetic therapy two days ago. I, and I, I, you know, with the earthing and with the lifestyle I've built, I've done a much, I've done a really good job of like keeping my nervous system balanced between sympathetic and parasympathetic. I go to the gym, I go to yoga, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can, I can just break out into a sprint if I want, but I'm also like resting and relaxing. I'm not overstressed. And that mm. is a primary thing that I wanted to do at this age. So I didn't have these like, you know, stress buildups and then, you know, go through that loop. Um, so I'm like in tune with that pretty well. Uh, I can't say it can't be improved more, but I'm pretty in tune with that. I did the biomagnetic therapy and right at the end of her placing the final magnets, I went to sleep and it was oh, yeah. like a very low level of sleep. Uh, and then I think it's like 10, 15 minutes later, she broke, she woke me up. And then uh, we did a, uh, there was like an affirmation that I spoke through, uh, yeah. which was really good. But the point of me mentioning that is that the body goes into those uh that parasympathetic activity a the fact that's being triggered is really good that's a good sign for anyone that's like you know cautious about this like the fact that's triggering parasympathetic activity which where most people are like heavily deficient and out of balance that's a good sign that it's good for you and then b that is that protective state too i mean that's where the body when you're sleeping does a lot of these big regenerative processes yes um oh yeah and so uh whether that's i find that happens often with earthing so i'm, I'm interested I'm, you know it's interesting to hear that you get that all the time with your clients yes and um the thing with uh the pemf um that's important to know is that it increases in, in many ways it increases the apoptosis rate so that program cell death so it's super effective with cancer it seems to target cancer more strongly due to the resonant characteristics of the cancer cell, you know, that DNA in there, it's enzymatic activity. Like cancer contains more DNA, more nuclei. It can be like multinucleated, whereas a normal cell is one nucleus and just the bundle of chromosomes inside. Yeah. Uh, so that would, that would explain why it has a stronger effect on cancer, but it will still have an effect on cells. Um, and so for the body to go into that parasympathetic uh, healing state, and ideally, like you're fasting too, even if it's just an intermittent fast, um, then that'll further protect those cells. And some of the healing effect comes to the fact that you are killing off some of your cells. They might not be like, you know, cancerous, but they're also maybe not the healthiest, healthiest. And then as a result of there not being space there, the body can undergo, you know, uh, proliferation and fill in those gaps. And to kind of go, I guess, to give people a little breadcrumb one step further is one of the interesting things about bioelectricity is some of the strongest fields of the body, these regenerative bioelectric fields emanate from the bones. And when you apply, when you take those fields that are measured, and then they've done some studies like with mice and things, and you apply that field and the bone's not there, the regenerative effect is almost nothing because the bone marrow itself contains these undifferentiated like stem cells. And as you get older, there's less and less of them. Yep. So what's what's uh, really quite disturbing with, uh, for, for example, like the advent of uh, spike proteins is that they accumulate in bone marrow and they trigger these inflammatory responses. So now you're attacking those de-differentiated cell pop populations. Um, and the, another like evidence and clue that PEMF has some really powerful therapeutic effects is that of all the things that it's been uh, researched for, it seems that it helps the most with uh, osteoporosis, bone growth, bone healing, fracture, men's, 
things of that nature. So it seems to be working at that deep level with the osteoblast and, and the bone marrow and with those de-differentiated cells and helping potentially helping those to proliferate, which then not there's there's like multiple methods of healing. There's the cells can like, you know, uh divide and fill in a gap. There is, you know, your body can just shoot some collagen fibers and create a scar over it and fill in kind of the wound. Or your body can literally send these de-differentiated cells and then your overall morphogenetic field instructs them, okay, this one becomes that bone tissue and then this one next to it becomes the, uh, right. the cartilage tissue. And now you like have de novo, like, you know, regen- regeneration um, from the base. And that is the most powerful. That's how a salamander cut off the arm can literally regrow its entire arm right. or um, some of these other creatures, you can cut them in half and they're like, I don't care. You know, they just totally regrow. <laughs> right. But the more, the more complex the organism, the, the harder it is to tap. It seems to be harder to tap into those uh, really powerful, deep regenerative mechanisms. And then also as, as the age increases, it seems. So yeah. there's this connection right. with PEMF and, and being able to, you know, by altering those populations, uh, you know, immune systems housed in the, housed in the cells, the, the bone marrow, um, to a large degree, like the T cells. And then also seems there's a connection there with then therefore longevity, because if you're going to live a long time, you're going to need, uh, like new, like new, new cell population. It's not a division that where now the telomeres are shorter on those chromosomes, like, like right. a brand new cell population in that area. Right. So I think it's really exciting how now the starting, all these different fields are starting to be seen holistically together. And we have uh, people uh, like the founder of Spooky2 and, you know, his entire team, you know, really putting good, like, engineering behind these products and choosing frequencies that are important. Like, the fact that this is a Schumann frequency is the absolute best out there. Like, he could be like, oh, I'll make it a 50 hertz field. It's like, <laughs> we're, we're, there, there's, there is science showing the 50 and 60 hertz, like in a clinical setting can do it just because it is some resonant field, but we're already immersed in it. So that, we don't yeah. need the 50 hertz. Like the Schumann right. field is the one that we evolved in. That's the intelligent application of this. And then the Rife right. technology goes through and perhaps, you know, a yeast cell vibrates specifically at this one and a pathogen specifically that frequency. So That's right. there's yep. those applications, but for just like a, a general, as I say, if you're interested in this and just want like a general tool, then that shoe on frequency, this mat, it's large. So it covers quite a bit of the body. You can even just use it as a generator in the home, which is what <laughs> I've been doing for the right. most part, but it's, you know, you can stretch with it. Even if you're, even, even if it is over there and you're stretching with it, then it's still having an effect because it's creating that pulsed field interacting with the earth's static magnetic field, which is like a I'm not sure if you know uh, ion cyclotron resonance and the, some of the science behind that. Not really. Mm-hmm. It's 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 not many people are. I just started researching into it, but it's really fascinating because these ions have this uh, cyclical resonance and vibration in static fields. And then when you apply that pulse field, that's what triggers them to then start to move and jump out of different... Um, they Sometimes ions can get locked in things called uh, coherency domains based on water and that's why the water is so important and you know your minerals and everything it's all connected and uh i hope that this you know conversation that we've had have helped to you know put out some like information uh you know kind of paths and breadcrumbs and tendrils you could say but also <laughs> to create like like a more cohesive whole summation for people to understand uh and so people can kind of fill in the gaps themselves because we don't we're, we're never going to know everything. But uh, if if you're on a healing journey, there's a lot of ways to heal the body beyond just a pharmaceutical pill. Sure. Uh, Absolutely. Those, those at the end of the day are just working on electromagnetism themselves uh, because they're binding certain receptors based on the electromagnetic characteristics. And that's one of the. Uh, I'm curious as your thoughts as to like the next frontier and some of this uh, electromagnetic therapy. I know <laughs> like one example that I can I can call out would be how you can measure the specific like electromagnetic frequency of let's say like an herb or supplement 
Sure. And then that, the idea is that now that you have that frequency, instead of them having to actually take the herb, right. that they could just apply that right. and get some of the same effects. And I think that is really a powerful concept that you could develop this pharmaceutical, for example. Um, it doesn't have to be pharmaceutical, but let's say it is. You could develop a pharmaceutical. Instead of giving to them, you could just give them the field. Right. And I think I think that's a, a frontier in like biomagnetic therapy. But I'm curious as to uh, some other kind of vistas that you see that, you know, the sooner you can start to uh, experiment with this safely, then perhaps that is that more powerful method, which cuts down that healing window, because that is important to reduce that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, using the remote technology and quantum entanglement, we're able to actually use a fingernail, place it in a device and expose it to frequencies and have it affect all the rest of the DNA. That's the same, no matter where they are in the universe. So 10 mm. years ago, I had a hard time getting my head around this because it uh, interferes with my traditional science training. But as soon as I accepted it, I was able to open my my brain and my ideas to something that was totally non-connective with everything else I had been thinking and learning and processing <laughs> yeah. over the years. And so quantum, the quantum science was an absolute mind blower. Quantum entanglement, where let's say somebody gets a kidney from someone else and they suddenly uh, start acquiring the characteristics of the person that gave them the yeah. organ. So this DNA has memory and energy beyond traditional science means of understanding. And that was mind blowing. But getting back to the herb thing, we have in the Spooky 2 database, we have all the frequencies to all the herbs, as well as molecular mm. weights of compounds, even prescription drugs. We can use those frequencies that emulate the molecular weights or the effect, rather, of the prescription drugs and then get the effect of that prescription drug without the side effect. That's been my experience. Mm. Uh, and so there's that. And there's also uh, we have, you know, the scalar field, we establish scalar field to to uh, boxes and we create a scalar field. We can put a compound or essential oil on the receiver end of the spooky to scalar field. And then what happens is it modulates the frequencies of the scalar field. So that frequency of that particular compound or, or essential oil is actually moved through the scalar field and it becomes, uh, you know, a therapeutic frequency through the scalar field that you can benefit from but also we have another transmitter end of the box where you can put a glass of water which will then be imprinted which you haven't gotten into fully yet in this mm -hmm. uh, long conversation that we've developed here but you can imprint those frequencies into the water i think you mentioned water uh mm, talking yeah. about water before and its special um chemistry you can implant imprint those frequencies into the water and drink the water throughout the day and receive the frequency via the special properties of water. So that is some frontiers of research that I don't know people really understand, but they're probably already benefiting from all over the world because, you know, the scalar boxes for Spooky 2s all over. People have been using remotes for 15 years at least, even in, from South Africa. There was Johan Stegman working with remote technology, and then, you know, uh, John White picks it up in 2015 and develops a computer program and enables us to benefit from all these different frequencies and different waveforms and amplitude duty cycles, et cetera, and being able to manipulate so much more of the, the, the frequencies and the type of frequencies to, for applications in the human body through remote technology, quantum entanglement, through the scalar field, through traditional rife technology where we're applying pads to the body, uh, you know, putting a sweep from 41,000 to 1 1.8 million hertz and looking for that resonance, you know, the glass that shatters at, at the high C mm -hmm. note. And when we find that, we reapply that frequency to kill bad bacteria, viruses, parasites, cancer cells. And that's sort of the easiest thing that we do. The hardest thing is dealing with the pain and inflammation. When a person is older and, a you know, poor health, late fourth stage cancers, mm -hmm. uh, over toxified with all kinds of junk, you know, not just the heavy metals and, uh, you know, dear Jesus, the forever chemicals and the glyphosates, mm. but like what we're talking now, which is stuff you can't necessarily put your hand to because there's so much going on in terms of magnetic fields and wavelengths. We have meters that can do that, but how many people really are using those meters? Um, I, I don't know. And how many people are really thinking at the depth 
that we've gone into uh, looking at how to protect from certain fields, how to apply certain fields that are uh, more healthful and so on. It's, it's complex and narrowing that down from where we've gone to how I'm going to apply it to the client sitting in front of me. That's in the middle of a, a scalar field, rife rife treatment. I mean, that's needed. There's a, there's a big gap there and, and that's super needed. People like us, they, they use this stuff all the time and apply it. You know, how can we reach the gap between the science and the, and the patient where it's practical for them and easier for them to understand. Yeah. That's the art and the science and the magic of that. Yes. Uh, really that, that develops, you know, that, that intuition and some of these other characteristics are what's needed for that. And that's, I think where science misses, misses a boat. And that's why my channel is not purely science. Um, I mean, there is a science to it. The word science has so many definitions now that if you have to be careful with the language that you use, even, because I can say science, one person thinks something, someone else thinks something else when I use the word science. But the uh, yeah, some of these other aspects that are really important, um, like can you feel that person's energy and see like the muscle testing for this biomagnetic therapy was interesting because I was like doing it. I was just basically repeating a mantra in my head and just totally relaxed. But she was able to use muscle testing to get yes and no answers and I don't necessarily understand it. Like she showed me like how she can, you know, ask a question in my body. And then it gives like, you know, the muscle, the leg contracts a little bit more to show. Yes. Like how that works. I don't really know. Um, but it, it was though, I mean, I, my friend was with me, so I was able to see her do the yes, no, and the leg would literally like get closer or further away. And <sighs> just kind of putting sometimes suspending disbelief a little bit. Um, still, still, having a good skeptical mindset and like, let's like dig into this and research into this. Uh, sometimes you have to suspend disbelief a little bit to get to a point where then you can kind of work backwards and figure it out. I find. Um, yeah. But yeah, when you have that person that really has a lot going on. Yeah. What is that first step? And that's kind of what I've been thinking about just, just the past few days, especially of like, what is that simplest, but most effective. And I really think it might be water because the um the like the quantum coherency domains of water these uh nanometer sized structures uh that spontaneously start to resonate together so the water molecules do hydrogen bonding form these coherency domains these spherical domains they all begin resonating at the same uh frequency and then surround them are undifferentiated, non-coherent water molecules vibrating at all, all their own frequencies. But these coherency mm. domains are able to capture electromagnetic energy. And they're actually able to capture wavelengths that are huge. Like they've been shown to capture the Schumann resonance wavelength at 7.83 hertz, 7.58, mm. whatever, which is the wavelength the size of the Earth's circumference, so 40,000 kilometers. But here's this nanometer structure that is able to hold on to that that Schumann frequency photon because it's changing. There's other ways to uh, change the wavelength and keep the frequency through velocity, you know, paring mm -hmm. down and stuff of this nature. So it's able to capture that photon. It's able to capture that ion, and then they can form. You know, they form these resonating structures. They can then start to resonate together, form super coherency domains. There can be nested coherency domains. This one's vibrating here. This one's vibrating here. This one's vibrating there. And they are able to store a tremendous amount of information. So, like, that's really powerful with 70% water. And my thought is, like, perhaps the easiest thing, the most beneficial thing is if you're just able to get that water to, to increase, I mean, the mineral balance is very important. But if you're able to get somehow get water to increase the amount of coherency domains, then you can now hold more information throughout your field. And that could perhaps give you that sudden enlightenment for I should be fasting right now. I should be doing this because a lot of people, they know, but they don't understand. Like they know they should be, let's say fasting or they know they shouldn't be eating wheat when they are uh, because they have an intolerance and in just even for like the glyphosates, for example, they know these things, but they don't do them. So they don't actually know, like they don't understand but perhaps if you change the dynamics at that quantum scale with these like coherency domains, now your information ability goes up, you're, you're capturing the information you need better. And now you literally have a different 
information field just as a result of the water you're drinking. Simple as just going like this, right? And glug, glug, glug. And now you have those instant shifts where, because I've had those before, those instant shifts are like, I can't do this. Like I need to do that. It's just your, your vector just immediately changes. And that might be that. I think that's really powerful. So talking about how you're imprinting the water with that scalar field, I think that is a huge area that's going to uh, be very, very beneficial um, and just requires a lot more research, but I could see that because it has to come from within. So um, helping people is great and all this, but uh, being us being kind of like enzymes to facilitate these reactions for other people is, I think, uh, kind of where things are going rather than like forcing or like a lot of the medical system is just lazy and say, here's just the pill. And then yeah, I, get right. my, I get my payout from the insurance company, right? They like that set up, uh, but that's not working. <laughs> it's not working. Um, but it might, it might in many ways boil down to water and these, they're just the information field that is in your location in space time. And then if you change that at the fundamental level, um, through maybe drinking more structured water that's like, let's say, right from a glacier. So like I've had glacial water. It's incredible. Like it just feel different. Or like water that's in a scalar field, like charging your water with crystals. I don't really know how that works too much, but there's something there clearly. Mm-hmm. I think something with water might be the uh, the real way to enact some of these changes at that fundamental level. And then these people find that path to get out of these holes that they might be in whether it's physical, mental, emotional, whatever. And it's it's just that really easy flow now. It's not some difficult new path of suffering. Ideally, it's hopefully just like, this is like water flowing the best route downhill. Mm-hmm. And it just happens on its own. And then it starts to snowball. And I think, I guess the final takeaway message um, that I would like to give is just, um, you know, you don't figure it all out at once. Uh, but if, you, if the right steps are taken at the beginning, and you don't have to, you start off on a good foot. So you don't have to, un, you don't have to unlearn all that much later on. <laughs> I think then it's this very nice cycle and that just have faith and trust in the process that you'll learn what you need to learn. You'll do what you need to do when it needs to happen, when you're ready for it. Um, and I think a lot of people are increasingly at a point where PEMF is like that next step. Uh, they've done this, they've done this, they've done this. Now they are like, you know, ready to work at some of these deeper levels so it's really good that these products exist um is there anything else you'd like to say uh yeah, i, I some of the conclusions yeah there's some ideas that i think uh you reminded me of and that is let water be thy medicine you mm-hmm. know because if you look at the blue zones i'm sure that's a whole nother show but uh the mineral yeah. content of those uh blue zones is really good high in silica and i started thinking well let water be thy medicine but you've taken it to a whole nother level with with the ideas that talking about coherence and the levels of information the transfer of water it's really heavy duty i mean those ideas <laughs> are just there's a whole nother level of complexity to what you're talking about that's just absolutely mind-blowing uh, in any case, uh, my website is drbillmcgraw.com. For those looking for more information on the kind of work that I do, treating people with rife technology, scalar fields, PMF, mats, and there's a coupon on my website uh, that where you get 5% anything off at spooky2mall.com. And I think it's 0511 bill is all the coupon is. And you go to spooky2mall.com website and you get 5% off a PMF mat like what uh, Stefan has showed you in this video. So there you go. Yeah, the mirror mate. Uh, I'll put all these links in the video description, uh, along with some other useful resources um, that some common maybe health things that you may have or just want to educate yourself on. So there's also Mm -hmm. other jumping off points for you. Anyone that's watching this video. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. Uh, Dr. Bill, thank you so much for joining today. This is the I guess the second podcast. I mean, I've had people tell me I should do a podcast for a long time, way before I started YouTube. They're like, you should do a podcast. And I always found that interesting. Okay. And this, uh, I suppose this is number two, because I recorded number one on Saturday. So mm-hmm. number two episode. Uh, thank you so much right. for joining and uh, for sharing, you know, your experience, uh, your story, and, you know, being someone that I can talk to about some of these things and to, uh, you know, help create that kind of summed up view of things, a holistic view, uh, which I think is so important. 
And um, yeah, be happy to have you back on at some point if I I'd continue I'd, to do these. I'd love to come back and yeah, you go ahead, go forward and do the podcast thing. I think it's going to be remarkable and a lot of fun. Cool. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And I'll see you all in my future videos. Thanks. Ciao. Bye-bye.